listening to the What the Wrestling Podcast, the show that brings you all things wrestling with your host, R.J. D. Wrestle Dream, ladies and gentlemen. It is in the books. It is over. And it was fantastic. We had an excellent weekend of wrestling. Say less. Say what you want to say. But I'm going to review NXT as well because damn it, NXT was good too. And we got another pay-per-view next week. But first things first, we're talking about Wrestle Dream. And Wrestle Dream, dare I say, was very, very good. But we're going to get into all of that. But first things first, hit the goddamn like button. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. What's the wrestling? Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Spotify and Anchor for all you gamers out there are JDTV too. We got some new content coming there too. RJDTV on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. And as always, on the Twitter, aka X, RJD199. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into this show. Let's go. Yes, 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 tis I, RJD here. Welcome to What The Wrestling. This is your AEW Wrestle Dream Review. And man, we had a good night. We had a good night. We had a good weekend full of wrestling, actually. And that makes me happy. (laughs) I like wrestling. Wrestling is amazing. And we had ourselves a good weekend of wrestling. We had a surprise that really wasn't a surprise because we kind of all saw it coming. Well, most of us saw it coming with the Rated R Superstar. Now on AEW TV, he has jumped ship and went over to AEW just like Jade Cargill has jumped ship and went to WWE. So... We swap you a Jade Cargill for a Edge. Who got the better end of the deal? I don't know. It's all good on my end, but I'm just happy that Edge is back, coming right back with Christian, getting into something immediately. Once I saw the main events of Wrestle Dream was going to be the TNT title, I kind of figured Edge was going to show up. Um, Adam Copeland is on Elite. As you can see by the title and the picture on the thumbnail. It is official. So shout out to him. So first things first, hit the like button. Hit the like button as always. Let us talk about the show as a whole. And then we'll get into all the matches and what I thought about all of them. Uh, First things first. Wrestle Dream as a whole, good show. Good show, solid show. And man, oh man, Swerve, Swerve and Hangman started it off. It seemed like... 
And that is when it started to get crazy after Swerve and Hangman. This was a very good show. The last two, uh, the all of the matches that were hyped up were good. There were no bad matches here. My underdog, my match of the night for me, match of the night for me is that TNT title match. That match was just brutal, and we'll get into that when I get into it. Probably going to end up talking about that first. But match of the night for me, TNT title match, the... the Surprise match of the night for me, Def definitely the TBS title, Statlander versus Julia Hart. Julia Hart might be the most improved wrestler, man or woman, in 2023. From where Julia, I don't even think she's 21 yet. I think she's 20 or 21 years old. And from where she started, what, two years, a couple years ago, where she started a couple of years ago, I think she was with the Hollywood Blondes before she turned to the House of Black, if I'm not mistaken. From where she was to where she is now, there is no comparison. She is absolutely fantastic. And I don't know who has gotten better, like her or Tiffany Stratton. Like, if I had to pick, like, the, the two best women's wrestlers on the come up right now is those two. If Julia Hart keeps this up, I mean, I don't know how long she's going to be with the House of Black, but man, oh man, I, w I wanted this girl to win last night. <laughs> and I like Chris Statlander. I think Chris Statlander is awesome. I think she needs to keep being a dominant champ. But they had themselves a good, a good match last night. So very, very good. Let's talk about Zero Hour really quick. Kojima, Lee, and Starks, and Athena beat... Martinez, Diamante, Taylor, and Lee Moriarty. Claudio Castagnoli beat Mark Barnett. Uh, Mark Barnett. Uh, what the hell is his name? Mark Barnett, I think. I don't know I'm saying that wrong. Luchasaurus beat Nick Wayne. And the acclaimed and daddy ass beat TMDK in Zero Hour. So, Zero Hour was I. Right. Nothing crazy going on there. I do think Athena and Keith Lee. Now, I don't know if they're doing, I don't know if they're taking their time on Keith Lee because, you know, the heart problem, so they don't want to put him in nothing too crazy. But listen, if he's in the ring and he's cleared, I wish he was in something more substantial because Keith Lee is simply amazing. And Athena, I think Athena needs to be in, I, I wish Athena was not on Ring of Honor. Because she would be a great, great boost to that women's division. That's the only other things that I would say about Zero Hour. First things first, we had MJF going up against the Righteous. I like the Righteous. They're new to the scene. Well, new to, to me. Not new to the scene. They're new to me. We had MJF cutting a promo saying somebody stole his mask. So, excuse me. We're going to have to keep an eye out on who the hell stole MJF's mask. Jesus, excuse me, Jesus. Stupid. We're going to have to keep an eye out to see who stole this brother's mask. So we still don't know what's going on with that. Adam Cole was not there. So maybe he actually really is injured. I hear people talking about, oh, he's not hurt. It's work. Listen, maybe he is hurt. We don't know. We'll see. But he wasn't there. So MJF had to go at it alone. Mention Tofu yet again. And he might actually get Tofu over. He got over a body slam, and then he said he was going to put one of the righteous heads up the other righteous's ass, and he was going to body slam the bigger of the two. They played to it, and MJF is so entertaining. I know people are mad because they're like, oh, we want MJF to defend the title. Why is he sitting there not defending the title even though he's the world champ? You don't want to pin your world champ. Adam Cole is hurt, so eventually they're going to have to figure out something to do and MJF is going to have to lose those titles if Adam Cole is going to be out with a shattered ankle. They're going to have to figure that out. But for now, very entertaining. Nothing wrong here. I love this match because it entertained the hell out of me. So what more is there to say? Very, very good. The end came with the Heat Seeker. And MJF retains the titles. So MJF. 
And he did protect them by putting his feet on the ropes behind the referee's back. So they tried to protect the righteous as best they could. And it is what it is. Sometimes you got to improvise and call the audible, you know? Things happen. But this was very good. Crowd was into it. Crowd is hot for MJF. If you ain't going to put him on last, put him on first. I'm all for it. Then we had Eddie Kingston versus Katsuyori Shibata. Man, it is just, let's just down DeMarco for Shibata. From, from Shibata almost dying, what was it, five, six, seven years ago? Um, it was a while ago, I can't remember. But if you know that story, Google it, YouTube it. Shibata almost died. Uh fighting Okada, if I'm not mistaken, in Japan. And to see him, they told him he would never wrestle again, and he is now back wrestling again and fighting Eddie Kingston and looking good doing it. Love Shibata. Could I have to see him out there doing what he does? This was a basically, uh, I'm just going to beat the holy hell out of you match. And Shibata, the more technically sound wrestler, was... Getting the best of Eddie here, but Eddie ends up Eddie ends up getting the win after I think he hit two back fists and he got the oh yeah, two back fists and a power bomb and a stack a la Gunther style. And he gets the win. Shibata is just the best. And both men at the end, that Indian style, Eddie Kingston gave the ring to Shibata. In honor of Anoki, which is what this whole wrestle dream was about in the first place. A lot of people doing abdominal stretches. Like that happened in like every match to pay homage to Anoki. So good stuff here. Eddie Kingston, Shibata, good match. First two matches were very entertaining. And it seemed like the first match was good. The second match was good. And then we got to Chris Statlander and Julia Hart. And it's like each match was good and good and good it was like first match was more entertaining than anything second match was hard hitting and then we had statlander and julia hart and these ladies worked hard as hell and they got the crowd they got the crowd into it and after after julia hart hit that moonsault they were ready to explode for julia hart they might have to run this back and i don't know Statlander shouldn't lose yet. I don't think it's time for her to lose. She just got the belt from Jade, what, three, four months ago? So I think Jade is a powerhouse. Uh, not Jade. Stat is a powerhouse. Statlander is strong, powerhouse, very athletic, very good at what she does. And I would love to see them run this back with Julia Hart maybe in three months. Let her build herself back up. Maybe she cheats to get in a tournament or something. Tell a story about it. I don't know, but I I want to see the title on her now. And I know that's selfish of me, but I, I want to see the title on this girl now. This girl is, is a beast. But I know everything in due time. She's not ready yet. She'll get there. But man, this, this was... She's got the entrance. She's got the look. She's got Brody King as the big bad bodyguard. And after she hit that moonsault, the crowd was going crazy. She tried to put on her submission, but Stat powered out of it and ended up hitting her with a tombstone. And then she hit her with a Sunday night fever, called it a night. And that's all she wrote. And then, <laughs> and then Brody King, which, which was a great visual, he picks her up by the shoulders and the, carries her out. <laughs> he like fireman carries her out and she's like her arms are dangling because she's out cold and that was just great to see her leaving like that that was awesome awesome stuff here then we had the guns the young bucks the lucha bros and hook and orange cassidy this was every bit as crazy as you thought it would be uh we they got uh mr what's his name mr ray phoenix they got him up out of there quick I don't know if he was legit hurt, but Ray Phoenix is legitimately banged up right now. He's got like a hurt shoulder, a bad back, a bad ankle. <laughs> he He's all beat up. It's just like, Jesus Christ. Damn, son. It's like a Phoenix. Stop it. Get some help. This, this brother, they got him up out of there quick. I think this match went like 15 minutes. 
But they got Phoenix out of there within like the first five minutes. Everybody got their signature spots here. This was a uh, people going all over the place. Hook, Hook and uh, Matt Jackson doing Northern Lights to everybody. This was very, very good. All action. The, the guns. First of all, the guns have been hitting the gym. Both of those guys are looking jacked right now. Billy, Billy Guns, Billy Guns, uh, kids, they looking absolutely jacked. Uh, don't know if they're going to get another run so soon with the tag titles, but I'm glad they're working on their physiques. They look great. I thought this was going to go to Orange Cassidy and Hook, but it didn't, which kind of shocked me. But, I mean, it is what it is. It just didn't go to them. And the Young Bucks got the win. So, shout out to the Young Bucks. This is something probably could have been on Dynamite, but I ain't mad at it. This was a nice match. Got the crowd involved. Everybody got time to shine. And Young Bucks and FTR Part 4, they're going to run it back. They refuse to shake each other's hands. Well, Young Bucks refuse to shake their hands. So, are we going to get the douchebag Bucks? We will see. So, like I said, all of these matches were very good. Were, were very good to great starting off. And then shit got real. Swerve Strickland versus Hangman Adam Page. Holy hell. All right. What I loved about this match, they were in Swerve's hometown. So Swerve got the hometown babyface entrance. Crowd was on his side. And the beauty of it is Hangman did play a little bit to the crowd, playing heel. Swerve was working babyface. And they did this too when Keith Lee and Swerve fought the acclaimed. The acclaimed, everybody wanted the acclaimed to win. So Keith Lee and Swerve slowed it down. They slowed it down and they worked a heel style to play to the crowd, which made the crowd want the acclaimed to win even more which they ended up losing, but they ran it back and then they got the win. So that's called being a professional. These guys are professionals. They play to the crowd. They know what they're doing. Swerve is Swerve is like Ricky Starks, right there on the cusp of being a big star. And this might have been his breakout performance. Swerve, they really wanted Swerve to win, especially towards the middle and end of this match. They really wanted Swerve. To beat Hangman. Prince Nana got involved. Obviously. He ended up. Uh, Swerve ended up doing. A modified version of the arm breaker. That Penta does. When he breaks the arm. Swerve kind of does the same thing. In this match. So that kind of nullified. The buckshot lariat. Hangman hit the buckshot. But was unable to capitalize. Because his arm was so badly damaged. Prince Nana ends up. Putting Hangman, uh, putting Swerve's legs on the ropes. He gets kicked out, but he comes back down, distracts the ref. Swerve hits him with the crown, Prince Nana's crown, and hits two kicks to the head and a JML driver and calls it a day. There was a very crazy spot where after he did the arm break, the doctors were out there looking at him, and Swerve did a freaking meteora <laughs> to stomp. Onto Hangman, onto the apron. And then there was another spot where he got hit with the dead eye on the steps. I was like, Jesus Christ. Stop it. <laughs> Get some help. These guys were killing each other. Absolutely killed each other. These guys beat the holy hell out of each other. Nothing wrong with... First of all, Swerve had the look of a champion tonight. He had the look. He carried himself as a champion and... I don't know what they're going to do because you can't beat MJF. A lot of the mid-card titles are kind of tied up. But to be honest with you, there are... This had a big fight feel to it. They really hyped up this match to be one of the biggest on the show. And now that he beat the Hangman, if this was WWE, Hangman would win the rematch and then they'd have one more match which kind of takes away from the feud. And I really don't want to see that, but they might need to do something with Swerve. I don't know how they keep Swerve hot. I've been thinking about it, and 
unless they have him go beat somebody else who's hot right now, that's a baby face, but there are really no other hot baby faces for him to beat. He's already done Orange Cassidy stuff. He's, I mean, he'd just be Hangman Page, one of the pillars of the company. So who's, who is there left for him to beat? I don't know, but this match was absolutely fantastic. Then we had another match which could have went on Dynamite. Ricky Starks versus Real Ayuda. This was basically there to get uh, Ricky Starks a win, and that was great. So maybe Ricky Starks now go goes and chases John Moxley. I don't know, but Ricky Starks is another one. If you're going to keep this brother hot, you got to keep on fighting people and winning. Every time they do something with Ricky, he wins, he wins, and then he loses. That's not going to cut it. You got to keep him winning. Stupid. Don't have this 50-50 bullshit like they do in WWE. We don't want to see that. So Ricky Starks beat Yuta. And what I do love is... Stop the show. What I do love is John Moxley on commentary. <laughs> Marco for that guy. John Moxley is fantastic on commentary. Simply fantastic. This brother was throwing F-bombs and shit this and, <laughs> and he actually knows his stuff. I mean, he's got that, yeah, you know, guys, I just want to see this guy beat the holy hell out of the other guy. And when it came to the next match, which is the dream match, Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr., he's talking about how Zack Sabre Jr. will... Put in a hold on your ankle, and then he'll finish the hold at your wrist. And he just transitions from one hold to the next. Brian Danielson is more reactive. If you grab his wrist, he'll grab your knee and twist your knee to then transition to your head to transition back to you. But if you grab his head, he'll transition to your ankle. Like, he's a transitional, more reactive. Zack Sabre Jr. is more proactive in his grappling. So... Not many people are going to like this match. A lot of people are going to call it boring because they don't want to see chain wrestling. They want to see kicks and flips and punches and chairs and tables. But you got to appreciate the technical wrestling of both of these brothers right here because Brian Danielson is... well, was highly considered the best technical wrestler in the world for years... And then when he had to retire, Zack Sabre Jr. took up the mantle and he won it for several years in a row. And who dethroned him after they changed the award to the Brian Danielson Award? The Brian Danielson, I, I think it's, instead of it being the most technical wrestler, it's the Brian Danielson Award. Brian Danielson beat Zack Sabre Jr. out last year to be, to win his own award. <laughs> so... So I don't know if people liked it or didn't like it, but this was a masterclass in technical wrestling. And if you didn't like it, you should have because it was awesome. These guys were awesome. Highlights of the match. Dan what the hell? Why is Siri picking up words? Anyway, highlights of the match. Zack Sabre Jr. baited Brian Danielson into hitting him with the injured arm. He was throwing uppercuts with the left. It wasn't impactful. He started throwing uppercuts with the right hand, which was the injured hand. And Zack Sabre Jr. Elbow shoulder tackled him to injure him. And then he worked over his arm for most of the match. I mean, putting each other in these crazy-ass holds. Just Brian Danielson one time had both his knees buckled and then both his arms behind him and then Zack Sabre Jr. had had both his arms on one hand and then had him into like a chokehold submission. It was just crazy. Go back and watch it. Masterclass clinic. Crazy dragon screws on Zack Sabre Jr.'s knee and ankle. I mean, it was brutal. Brutal, brutal stuff. Two bull psycho knees gets the win for Brian Danielson. This was a masterclass and a dream match worthy of the Wrestle Dream promotion. Good stuff. Good stuff here. Next, we had the 
I'm going to go crazy match of the night. The Don Callis family versus Jericho and the Golden Lovers. This was everything you would expect it to be with a match with Omega, Ibushi, Guevara, Osprey, Tech, Keshta, and Chris Jericho. This was crazy. Flippy flips all over the place. The end of the match came where Don Callis got involved, hit Jericho over the head with Floyd, the bat, and Sammy Guevara got the pin. This was great. Uh, Ibushi also smacked the holy hell out of Will Ospreay, knocking him out. Uh, those guys have wrestled each other a hundred million times, and you do not F with Kota Ibushi. Don't do it. Stupid. <laughs> Just don't do it. Very, very good. FTR versus Aussie Open. The crowd were okay with this. This was a good match. Super, a super uh, shatter machine for the win. FTR beats Ozzy Open. Didn't really get the heat it deserved because Ozzy Open, nobody really thought they would win. Even though Ozzy Open are a spectacular team. It wasn't getting the crowd reactions that I thought it should get. But that's fine. Ozzy Open's great. And I did see their first match. And their first match was a masterclass. I think this match was not as good as their first match, but their first, this match was pretty good too. So, super shatter machine off the top rope for the win. I don't think I've ever seen them do that. So, awesome stuff here. And that's it. That's all I got to say about that. Then you had the main event, Christian Cage versus Darby Allin. Two out of three falls. Holy hell. First fall, Mr. Turtleneck. Was out there looking like uh, I am Cornholio. He wanted something for his bunghole. He pulled the turtleneck over his head. And then he got rolled up. One, two, three. The second fall was absolutely mother effing brutal. Uh, all I said was. Bruh. And then I said. How dare you? It was just like. Darby's dead. Darby's dead. Darby's dead. That's all I said was Darby's dead. Christian takes the steel steps. He puts them behind the ring. And then he tries to suplex Darby onto them. But he realizes he's too far. So he suplexes Darby onto the floor, which had to suck. Bruh. Then he picks Darby up and he body slams him into the steps. But... His feet and his shoulder took the worst of that. Bruh. Then he picks Darby up and he body slams him again onto the steps. And his head, his shoulder, and his back took the brunt of that. And I was just like, How dare you? he's dead. We have seen murder on Wrestle Dream. <laughs> murder, I say. God damn. At this point, Fuck this shit, I'm out. I started to turn. I started to turn away. It was like a car crash. You can't. You just couldn't stop watching. It was mother effing brutal. God damn, Darby. Why? Why, Darby? Why? 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 I would have just. It would have been better for him to just get body slammed on top of the steps, and then he could have probably sold it so his back could have been flat against the steps. Instead of his head hitting the floor and his shoulder hitting the steps. I mean, damn. God damn, brother. How, how? Oh, shit. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> it's just, he got counted out, obviously. And then while that was happening, he was getting counted out. Christian is taking off all of the stuff, all of the ring. He starts uncutting the ropes of the ring, pulling up the mat of the ring. And then they put Darby on a stretcher and Christian Cage does a body splash. <laughs> he does a body splash onto Darby on the stretcher. Just just killing this poor guy. Just killing this poor fucker. Nope. Just killing him. And then he throws him back in there and hits the kill switch. <laughs> throws him back in there, hits the kill switch. And Darby still will not die. He just won't die. Which is great, because I'm glad Darby didn't die, because I don't want him to die. But still, he just, just killed them. So after that, Christian is still trying to figure out what to do. 
Still trying to figure out what to do. But here comes good old Nick Wayne. Nick Wayne comes down, and I think Darby hits the coffin drop. And now Christian is down for the count. So after Christian gets up, Nick Wayne gets in there. He grabs the belt. The crowd is going crazy. The crowd is booing. Huge, huge after he kicks out of the kill switch. Uh, he puts on the Scorpion death lock. Uh, Allen got to the bottom rope. He came back, hit the coffin drop. Didn't get the win with it. Uh, but Christian took out the ref with a spear. And then here comes Nick Wayne. And uh, <laughs> uh, Allen moved out of the way. And then uh, Allen hit him with a low blow. So he hit him in the nuts. Nick Wayne comes down. He takes the belt from him. Nick uh, Christian says, wait, you don't have to do this. Nope. You don't have to do this, guys. Darby says, hit him. And then Nick Wayne, he hits Darby Allen in the face. You triggered my trap card. He hits him in the face with the bell. Oh, hell no. <laughs> he hits him in the face. Bruh. Jesus Christ. And the crowd is going crazy. Nope. They are booing this man to the depths of hell. And it was at this point. It was at this point. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. He gets the pen and Christian gets the win. And everybody is mad. <laughs> everybody is mad. Bruh. And then here comes Sting. Sting comes down. First Luchasaurus comes down. No, Sting comes down first. They beat up Sting. Luchasaurus comes down. He tries to get Sting. And then the numbers game. The numbers game just gets the best of him. Three on one. Uh, Darby's dead. <laughs> Nick Wayne, then Nick Wayne, Sting, and Christian. Nick Wayne, Christian, and Luchasaurus then beat up Sting. And then the lights go out. Stop the cap. And then we get a small video package of somebody getting in a car and driving all the way all the way down into Seattle he gets out he has a leather jacket on looking like a badass and who is it who is it I say none other than Mr. Edge himself Adam Copeland when I looked up at the time and I saw Oh, we got about 10 to 15 minutes left. I knew we were getting a surprise. And as soon as you heard Metalingus go, uh, the Metalingus song, you think you know me, and then they're going crazy on this day, and everybody's going ape shit, and Edge is out there looking crazy. Christian got a crazy look on his face, and everybody's going crazy, just just screaming at the top of their heads, just screaming, just yelling for no apparent reason. It was awesome. He comes down, gets the gets the edge entrance. It sort of reminded me of seeing Cody at WrestleMania. Cody got the Cody entrance with the Cody Vader and the AEW entrance basically. And Edge, it just like it just looks like you took the WWE entrance and you moved it on over to AEW. Nothing wrong with that. He comes down, takes the chair from Christian, but then he hits Nick Wayne, spears Luchasaurus, spears Nick Wayne. Christian gets the hell out of there. Christian is still the TNT champ, but Edge is not a bad guy yet. He comes up, helps up Darby, helps up Sting, shakes both their hands, plays the music again, and that is how AEW goes off the air. This was simply fantastic. Was it the best AEW pay-per-view? No, but that's okay. It did not have to be. It was simply amazing. It was fantastic. We got Edge, and we got after Swerve. First of all, it built up from the first two matches. Then it went to Statlander and Julia Hart. And after that, it kind of just Swerve, and uh, the level just went up after that. 
from Swerve and Hangman, and it just stayed there for the rest of the night. So this was simply fantastic. That's all I can say about it. So with that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. So that's it. That's all I got. You know what we got tomorrow? The Monday Night Raw review. You know what we got next week? A pay-per-view. So we'll be back next week for the same thing. Look out for it. I am going to change the visuals. I do want to change it up and switch it up to something else. So look out for that soon. But as for me, I'm gone. Peace out. Everybody stay up. I'm out of here. Enjoy the day. AW Wrestle Dream Review is done. Over. Peace.